Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're gonna talk about what it might cost to fix these broken TDIs. This is episode 104 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. So as more information starts coming out about what may fix these Volkswagens that are having these emissions problems, the more we can kind of look in and see what actually may happen to provide a solution to these problems. Initially, when the story broke, there was a ton of people speculating and they had absolutely zero information. But Mr. Horn had a congressional hearing and he actually dropped a few hints about what may actually happen to fix all of these Volkswagens. So basically, we have two categories that need to be fixed. We have the older generation, the first gen common rail, and then we have the second and third gen common rails. Those two are, we're gonna kind of lump together because the solution is basically gonna be the same. These cars are gonna be 2012 and up Passats and 2015 Golf, Golf Sport Wagon, and Jetta. In this hearing, Mr. Horn basically flat out said these are software only fixes. The most logical thing that this software update is gonna do is increase the amount of urea injection on the selective reductant cat cars. So basically, if your car has AdBlue, this software update will most likely increase the amount of AdBlue injection, and that should most likely overcome the increase of NOx coming out of the tailpipe. Now, you may be thinking, ah, oh, crap, I'm gonna have to spend more money to maintain my car. Well, the good thing is, urea is actually really cheap. I think it's like 15 bucks for two and a half gallons. We usually use about two and a half, maybe three gallons sometimes every 10,000 miles. So even if this doubles, it's going to be, let's say an extra 15 to $20 every 10,000 miles. I know it's not money that you really wanna spend, but it's not like we're talking, you know, $300, $400, $500 extra every service. And those figures are really still unknown. That's going off sort of what BMW and Mercedes use. They use about two to three times more urea than the Volkswagens do. So Volkswagen's working with Bosch to come up with an exact calculation of how much urea we need to inject in order to bring our NOx levels down to meet these standards. They also may, this is kind of just my theory, they also may change EGR strategy to inject more hot air into the exhaust, which should also bring NOx levels down. But the important part of that is Mr. Horn did say that these cars, these 12 and up Passats and the 15 Golf, Golf Sport Wagon and Jetta will be software repairs only. Now, the bad part is that leaves a whole lot of other Volkswagens out there that need more than just software. Out of the estimated 500,000 vehicles in the US that are affected by this problem, 430,000 of them do not have urea as of right now. Mr. Horn also said that these will most likely be hardware and software updates. So what does that mean? The most logical thing that this can mean is that we'll be adding an AdBlue system onto cars that were not built with AdBlue systems. So these cars were never built with a selective reductant cat system in mind. They were put out without any of that stuff. And in order to retrofit these cars, it's gonna be a pretty big expense. Let's talk a little bit about what's gonna be required in order to install a urea injection system on these cars. So first thing we're gonna need is a tank. We're gonna need somewhere to put all of this urea. Inside that tank, we're gonna need a pump. And if it's a system like the Passat, we're gonna need things like a heater and a level sensor and a control module mounted on the top. So now we have this tank assembly with all kinds of stuff bolted onto it that we're gonna have to install in the car. That's gonna have to go somewhere. The most logical place is in the back of the vehicle, very similar to where the Passat or the Jetta has their tanks located. So that's gonna be right under and in front of where the tail lights are. The really odd part about that is I'm trying to like picture in my mind where the heck the filler neck's gonna go. Perhaps some sort of modified interior trim piece or something like that. We really don't know at this point. Volkswagen's still working on a solution. So we have the tank. We have to have lines and we have to be able to pump this urea up in near the Knox Cat. We have to have an injector. We have to have somewhere to install this injector. These systems were never built with urea injection in mind, so there's not like just a covered up port inside of the exhaust system. My guess is that this retrofit is going to require another exhaust pipe. The most logical exhaust pipe to replace is the Knox Cat itself. So on this whole big exhaust treatment plant bolted to these TDIs, you have the DPF, then you have the Knox Cat right behind it. Then there's an exhaust flap and you know the rest of the exhaust down the way. 
The most logical thing would be to take out the Nox cat and install a different Nox cat that has a port for a urea injector. In addition to all of that, we need wires. We have to be able to control all these things. So wherever this tank and module and pump assembly go, we need wires from there to the injector, and then we need to control all this somewhere. So we need to go to the ECM. The ECM on that car is in a couple of different places. The earlier gen common rails, it was under the cowl. The newer cars, thankfully, ran awesomely. It's right underneath the hood, right next to the battery, which will make doing this update quite a bit easier. We're probably gonna have to wire into the fuse panel in order to provide power to the injector and to the module and to the pump. Heck, these cars may even need ECMs. You know, the ECM is not fully maxed out as far as its capability, but we don't know whether this ECM that's currently installed in this car is going to have the computing capability to power all this extra, this whole entire new circuit. So that's another possibility that we may actually be installing new computer boxes. And in addition to all that, Someone's got to install it. So now we have to pay a technician, you know, six, seven, eight, ten 10 hours, whatever, to retrofit all of these pieces and parts, you know, run wires from the back of the car to the front of the car, tap into the ECM, tap into the fuse panel, make nice looms so that everything's tucked and pretty. These systems are probably gonna have to go through DOT and pass crash testing. You know, luckily, the newer body Jettas have vehicles that are very similar. Maybe they can skate through without that, but you know, I don't know, is an 09 Jetta gonna have to go through all this DOT testing because it was never tested with a tank 20 pounds full of urea? I don't know. Someone on Instagram brought up an awesome, awesome question of what is this gonna do to the suspension? You know, this tank full probably weighs 30 pounds that you're putting right behind the back tire. Was the suspension calibrated for this? Is this gonna impact the alignment? I mean, Let's be honest, 30 pounds isn't that much. It's, you know, a two bowling ball stacked in the back or, you know, one side full of groceries in your car, but it can impact the balance of the vehicle. Albeit it's probably a very, very minor thing, but it does bring up several interesting points of all of these things have to be considered. And that brings up one of my most understanding points about what's going on and kind of my frustrating point about what's going on is that there's no time frame for this fix. There estimating early year for the software update cars. So for the software update cars, I'm putting that to the side. These are gonna get fixed. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. It shouldn't impact performance of the vehicle in any way, shape or form. Yes, you will most likely have an increase in urea injection. In the grand scheme of things, it's pretty small pickles compared to the you know billions of dollars that this whole thing is gonna cost Volkswagen in order to get you know settled with the public and CARB and the EPA, but that's, again, minor. So we'll shelve that for now. The big cost, the big expense, and the one that there really is not a time frame for is the 430,000 cars that they don't have a solution for yet. And you know, we at the consumer level and even me at the, the low, like you guys don't understand, like corporate and then management and then low level Volkswagen corporate and then dealership employees are like way down here. Uh, we're all in the same boat. So we wanna know, hey, why the heck isn't this happening? Well, there's a lot that's gonna play into this. Things like DOT that we may not even consider as consumers. There may be like a heat shield that needs to be installed. I would never think twice about it. Maybe a sound dampener that's not there now that's gonna have to be installed. Who knows what else is gonna have to be modified. Based on what Mr. Horn said at the congressional hearing, the things that are most likely gonna happen Software updates for Gen 2, Gen 3, cars that already have AdBlue are gonna get more AdBlue. And the older generation, the one that there's a ton of, are going to get hardware and software. And it purely just makes sense that this is going to be adding on a retrofit urea injection system. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, remember, be nice in the comments section. And if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. Also, share this video with anybody that you know that may be interested in checking this out. You can also subscribe here on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.
That sounds like it's outside. Eh. 